All right, so today we're gonna talk about a couple of red queens. Let's get to it. Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a thousand and one book countdown for you plus an extra book. So I'm super excited to talk about both of those today. Um, if you're not familiar with the thousand and one book countdown, as always, I will leave a magical card up here for you where you can go and check out the original video where I talk all about the concept and all the details. It was my second video uh, ever. So, you know, I, I'm afraid to go even watch it, but if you want to go look, please go ahead and do so. <laughs> Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm reading books off of the thousand and one books you must read before you die list. And I combined all of the editions, which puts me at 1,315, but I have thankfully read over 300 plus books off of that list now. Um, but hopefully you'll consider giving me a subscribe and see how far I can make it through this journey of this massive project that I have. But for today, what we'll go ahead and do is put up our numbers, and it has been a few weeks, so pardon me if I look down a little bit because I don't remember where I stopped. Um, the first number is 945, and the second number is 47, which is my 2022 number. As every year, I select 52 books and uh, pre-select 52 books, and those are the ones I'm shooting for or want to read this year. Um, though I might read more, I might read less. No, I'll only read less. I hopefully will read more off of that list. But uh, that is our numbers for today. And so what did I read? As I mentioned in the intro, a couple of red queens, one on the thousand one list and one not. So let's jump right into it. First book, The Red Queen by Margaret Travel. Um, this book was published in 2004 and it's actually a later part uh, piece of her work. She has many, many more novels that were published before this one. Um, one thing, I did this, so let me start with this. I did this as a buddy read with Britta Bowler, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. I love doing buddy reads um, and Britta is really fun. Uh, we, I left her, you know, like 11 minute messages. So <laughs> it gives you a little clue as to how, how this book was. Um, but so the Red Queen is a real person in history. I can't pronounce her name, uh, but I did order her actual memoirs, which part of this book references her memoirs. So if you read the back of this book, it gives you the impression that you will be starting with kind of a researcher who's on her way to Korea and she comes across this manuscript or this uh, memoir. Um, this book does not start that way. This book starts with the crown princess. They call her the crown princess, the red queen. Um, she actually never becomes queen. She always stays a princess in, uh, in real life and in this book. But it starts with her uh, kind of documenting her life and going through and saying, you know, these are all of the events and her husband who was named Prince Sato Sato, I'm not sure how you say his name, uh, and so everything that went along with him uh, and her son, uh, you lots and lots of history told from her perspective as if she's kind of a ghost reflecting back on her past. You know, that part of the book was interesting. Uh, it wasn't what I expected, but it was, you know, very well written. I liked hearing more about the queen. It made me, like I said, pick up her actual memoir, which I think Britta and I are going to do a buddy read a little bit later <laughs> of her actual memoirs. Um, and then you get to part two of the book. So part two of the book was, unfortunately, a complete and utter letdown. Um, it did follow the researcher Barb, ha Babs Hallowell, or Barbara Hallowell, as she was getting ready to head to Korea. She's delivered this mysterious manuscript, and you don't know why, uh, or mysterious book, and you don't know why she gets it. And, and she's traveling to Korea, and she's you know, obsessed with reading it on the plane. And then, you know, at the presence of this ghost-like person, in the form of the queen, or the queen in the form of this ghost-like presence, never is fully realized. It is just like this annoying thing that she's in Korea. She doesn't really go like research more about the queen. Uh, she doesn't like get involved, kind of trying to figure out what happened to the queen or what happened to her husband. It's just kind of like this side thing over here. And I don't understand the choice. Um, make sure my microphone's on, uh, four minutes in, five minutes in, um, why the author made the choice to do that. It was so ineffective. It was so annoying because I wanted something more. I needed something more. I kept reading that part of the book going, okay, somehow you have to justify the Red Queen as a ghost. You have to justify that part of this. You have to understand like 
why? Why are you doing that as a construct in this book? And it was just such an utter letdown. I am so sorry. It was just one of those books that I was reading it going, why? And then the very end, which is called Postmodern Times, kind of gives you a little bit of an explanation. And yeah, it didn't work for me either. I was so disappointed. Uh, and yeah, just, it was, I mean, overall, very well written. It's just the the idea behind it and kind of the Bar Bar Barbara Hallowell, uh, about Barbara Hallowell character just flat out did not work. Um, if the book was more about what the bag had said with Barbara Halliwell going in and researching and then the Red Queen kind of interspersed throughout it, I think it would have been a lot more effective. But I, I, if you're wondering, yeah, I didn't really love this book. Is it as bad as some other books? No, absolutely not. It's not as bad as some of the other books. Is it my favorite book? Absolutely not. <laughs> I think I ended up giving it about between two and two and a half stars uh just because uh, there were a lot of it really did make me interested in this actual person and make me want to go research her more and read more about her but it did not work from the rest of the perspective so uh yeah if you want to read this book just know going into it that the back yeah it doesn't really describe the book very well uh and it was a bit of a disappointment for me so that is the first, the Red Queen, the first of the Red Queens. So, but with that, I do get to go from 945 to 944, and it was on my 2022 list, so I get to go from 47 to 46. Yay! Um, very happy about being there, but I am officially behind on the countdown in February because this is the second or third Sunday? Second Sunday, and I've only read one book. Uh, I have... <laughs> been reading the see the sea which is part of my book club and as you can see i don't have a lot left i only have history five left um and i'm loving this one so my next countdown should hopefully be an update of that book but let's talk so that's the end of the countdown i'll take my number down um <laughs> i just shook everything I'll take my numbers down <laughs> and um, talk about the second book, which I picked up specifically because of the title, which is also Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Aveyard? Aveyard? I'm not sure if that's how you say her name. I apologize in advance. So this is actually a young adult fantasy kind of a novel, um, and it is actually, from what I can tell, the first in a four-part series, and I think it was her first novel, Victoria Aviar's first novel, um, based on, you know, the very reliable source of Wikipedia. Um, so <laughs> uh, this follows a character whose name is Mare Barrow, and she is what you call a red. She has red blood, she lives in the stilts, she is um, a thief, a pickpocket, trying to get enough money to avoid being conscripted conscripted or drafted into the war effort. At 18, if she does not have a job, she will be forced to go into the war. Her brothers have all been drafted into the war, uh, and she is desperate. Um, and she does some things that lands her sister into some trouble and her into some trouble. And there is a bit of a, you know, convenient kind of trope where she meets someone who gets her a job at the palace. And then it just all goes haywire from there. Uh, you know, it is found out instead of being an ordinary red, she has special powers. So the other side of the reds, sorry, are the silvers. And the silvers are the royal, the royals, the people who have some type of power that can manipulate fire, can manipulate earth, can manipulate you know, um, water, and she gets thrown into the mix because it's found out that she has a special ability of her own, despite not having silver blood. Uh, and she, there are a number of kind of love interests in this uh, book where there's people who are certainly interested in her. She gets thrown into the silver world, not knowing how to really maneuver through it. Uh, there, <laughs> she tries to make some friends. She uh, is trying to learn this world and uh, her path in this is really actually really interesting I don't want to call it fun because it's you know got a lot of dark dark um, tone tones to it you know people being killed people being betrayed uh, you know just being people being oppressed and 
but she is involved with like three different people um and i can't i don't want to talk about it and spoil it too much but you know it is a fun young adult fantasy read i'm obviously not a young adult but i really enjoyed this one so much better than the red queen by margaret drabble um because this one was just a bit of fun uh, and i really enjoyed kind of seeing her try and maneuver through these but it is dark it is very disturbing some of this there's also kind of a love triangle trope there's you know that kind of thing um some convenient things happen in this book but i will say towards the end i was hugely surprised by what actually happened in this book by the ending of it i I thought it was going a different direction and you know she got me Victoria Aviard you got me uh, with this one but I would put this one pretty highly rated I don't read a lot of young adult uh, fantasy uh, but this one I would have put at the four star type of a range I really enjoyed this one quite a bit like I said this Red Queen one over this Red Queen not that it was a contest but um, I really enjoyed Victoria Aviard so much that I'm debating now getting the other four books in the series if you have read this is the are the rest of the books worth it I'm curious um, but yeah let me know uh, definitely glad there's not a sequel to this Red Queen but this Red Queen yeah interesting lots of Red Queens this today um, but uh, that's actually all I have for you it, it was a it's been a, a couple of weeks of rough weeding rough reading weeks uh you know just a lot going on unfortunately in my uh personal life that has caused a lot of disruption and i am doing kind of just in time reading um now and trying to keep everything kind of moving and still really want to be part of doing videos and things so um yeah yeah it's just kind of a lot I will catch up on the thousand one uh, book countdown though i don't know if it will be in march because i'm reading war and peace in march so uh yeah but that's all i have for you today i hope everyone is doing well as always like comment and subscribe and until next time thanks everyone bye